When Michael Jordan is in the zone, there is hardly anything that can stop him. Michael Jordan took pride in giving his all on the biggest stage under the brightest lights. With such motive, who could beat Michael Jordan? But who would have guessed that he had a weakness of taking things personally? What are these instances? Stay tuned as we provide more specifics on the subject. Starting us off, nothing could stop Michael. Jordan proved time and again during his Hall of Fame career that he was the ultimate clutch player. His airness arrived in New York City in 1995, fresh off his return to the Chicago Bulls after an 18-month retirement to face the Knicks in his first game back at Madison Square Garden. Jordan put on a show for the ages against a tough physical opponent with rugged defenders like Derek Harper, scoring 55 points in a 113-111 victory. A humbled Harper admitted after the game that there was nothing he could do to stop Jordan. Next, MJ is back in Mecca. Jordan saved some of his most memorable performances for Madison Square Garden. However, this game on March 28, 1995 was extra special, and the Big Apple knew it. If you know how New Yorkers feel about basketball, you can only imagine how excited the city was. For the game, there was a buzz like I'd never felt in New York before. Harper, who was in his second season with the Knicks at the time, agreed. Jordan had recently returned to the Chicago Bulls after spending time in minor league baseball, and the entire sports world was anticipating his return to the mecca of basketball. Jordan did not disappoint, scoring 20 points in the first quarter and 35 points by halftime. He set fire to every Nick before him, from John Starks to Anthony Bonner. Moving on, Harper gave it a shot. With nothing else to do, Harper asked for a chance to protect his airness. What did I have to lose? Pondered the weary veteran. So as Harper approached Jordan for his turn to guard him, Jordan gave him some advice. I'm hot now, he said. You have no options. Harper agreed. Despite Jordan's prolific scoring, the Bulls eventually prevailed, thanks to Jordan finding Bill Winnington for a wide-open slam that put them up 113-111 with 3.1 seconds remaining. We just didn't have an answer, Harper explained. When a game is on the line, something about greatness rises to the surface, and Michael Jordan is unrivaled. Following that, seven times Michael Jordan took it personally. First, when he ended Muggsy Bogues' career with a single line of trash talk. Michael Jordan would be a 10th Dan Black Belt in trash talk if it were a discipline. As the NBA's shortest player in history and former Charlotte Hornets point guard Muggsy Bogues can attest, the sheer destructive nature of MJ's words had the power to end your career. In 1995, with the Hornets trailing the Bulls by one point in Game 5 of a tied series, the 5-foot-3-inch talent had the most possessions of the game. Shoot it, you midget, MJ is said to have said. Bogues took a shot and missed by a wide margin. A year later, Bogues admitted he had never been the same since, believing that one play and one line of trash talk had effectively derailed the rest of his career. It's worth noting that MJ could both dish it out and take it. After dunking on 6-foot-1 Utah Jazz point guard John Stockton in 1987, a fan yelled something like, pick on someone your own size, which many believe was Utah Jazz team owner Larry Miller. Next, when he lost money playing golf drunk, only to win it back by betting on himself that night. Former NHL player Jeremy Roenick recounted a cheeky day session on the course with Michael Jordan a few years ago, right before the Chicago Bulls game against the Cleveland Cavaliers. Roenick and MJ got together to play 18 holes and drank a few cold ones. The two guys decided to wager some money on the action to make things more interesting. The hockey player outperformed MJ. Unsatisfied with the result, MJ challenged him to another 18-hole round, but he declined. We've been drinking all afternoon, and now he's going from Sunset Ridge to the stadium to play a game, Roenick says. I'm just fooling around. I'm going to call my bookie, I say. I'm putting all the money you just lost to me on Cleveland. I'll tell you what he says. I'll bet you we win by 20 points, and I have more than 40 points. Done, I say. Son of a gun scored 52 points, and they win by 26 points or something. This is where some fact-checking is required. While Roenick never specifies which game the story revolves around, the closest match to this incredible narrative would be the March 28, 1992 game between the Chicago Bulls and the Cleveland Cavaliers. Jordan did not score 52 points as claimed, but he did score 44 points, and right after being on the piss. This resulted in a 126-102 victory over Cleveland with a 24-point lead rather than the 26-point lead. So while Roenick's version isn't entirely correct, it did happen. Moving on, number three, when he bet $300,000 on a single putt. Apart from Michael Jordan's obsessive need to compete and gamble, there isn't much to this moment. Charles Barkley revealed more about his experience playing golf with his airness on The Dan Patrick Show. I've never been under more pressure, and I apologize to Michael for saying this. So we'd be playing golf with certain people for a few hundred dollars per hole, nothing major. And for $100,000, he'd be playing some guy. Charles picked that up, he said. Says, this putt is for $200, I say. Pick that up, Charles, and get out of my way. You're in my line, he says. How much is that putt, I wonder? $300,000, he says. Let me get out of your way, I said. It was insane, man. Following at number four, when he drove to the gym in a different Ferrari.
Ferrari every day for a week to flex on Antoine Walker. Former Boston Celtics star Antoine Walker was known for lavishly spending his money, often to his detriment. Aside from blowing every penny of his $110 million as a professional NBA player, Walker made a different mistake when he showed up to a workout in a Ferrari to flex on everyone present, including Michael Jordan. The latter was reportedly unimpressed by such a feeble attempt at dominance, so he decided to reciprocate by arriving in a different Ferrari daily for the next week of workouts. Walker was put in his place, to put it mildly. Next, at number five, when he turned down a staggering one-year $25 million contract with the New York Knicks and leveraged the offer into a pay bump. Michael Jordan was famously loyal to the Chicago Bulls, except for his two seasons with the Washington Wizards during his second return to the NBA. The New York Knicks offered him a one-year contract worth $25 million in 1996. According to CBS Sports, this was a 653% increase over his previous salary of $3,825,000. To make matters worse, the Knicks planned to do so through a legal cap circumvention, approved by Commissioner David Stern. Because Cablevision and ITT Sheraton owned the Knicks, the organization could use MJ for Sheraton Hotel commercials, thereby paying him more money without officially paying him more. Anyone else would have grabbed the money and bolted. Jordan and his agent David Falk used the New York Knicks offer to secure $30 million from Chicago to build a dynasty without settling for a lower salary. A year later, MJ's salary was increased to $33.14 million. At number six, when he created a $3 billion sneaker brand after being turned away by Converse, Michael Jordan, as a rookie, inadvertently changed the sneaker game in more ways than one by signing a contract with Nike after Converse refused to meet his demands. In the 1980s, the iconic Swoosh was a fledgling company that couldn't compete with more established brands like Converse, the NBA's staple footwear at the time, or Adidas, which were stronger in every way, from revenue to branding. After some back and forth, Nike welcomed his heirness to the family with a $250,000 down payment and his sneaker line. Nike initially estimated that Air Jordan sneaker sales would total $3 million by the end of the four-year contract. Nike would sell 126 million units in the first year alone, almost entirely due to Jordan's name, reputation, and stardom. This, however, was only the tip of the iceberg. Estimates put the total value of the Nike Air Jordan brand at around $3 billion as of the end of the fiscal year, with MJ himself pocketing over $1.3 billion since 1984. According to Forbes, while Michael Jordan's Nike contract unquestionably established the richest athlete endorsement deal in history, it should be considered the biggest endorsement bargain in sports. The icing on the cake? Nike bought Converse for $309 million in 2003 and Reebok for $3.8 billion two years later. Finally, when he scorched the damn earth during his Hall of Fame speech, Michael Jordan must have missed the memo about being gracious in victory and defeat. Take, for example, his infamous Hall of Fame acceptance speech. Throughout the 23-minute event, nobody was spared, including his high school coach, his high school teammates, his college coach, two of his pro coaches, his college roommate, his pro owner, his pro general manager, the man who was presenting him that evening, even his kids, according to ESPN's Rick Riley. Well, that concludes this video. Hope you enjoyed it. Remember to like and subscribe to get an update on our latest videos. And thanks for watching.